Yeah, looking forward to getting the uh, season going. Um, that December meet is a pretty good opportunity because we're probably as fit as we're going to be uh, after three months of training without, stop, without stopping. Um, kids are excited. Obviously, uh, timing is not always ideal because you got finals coming up. So people are a little nervous and got a little preoccupation. Um, but our goal is just trying to get some rest. We got some freshmen who haven't competed indoors, who have not competed indoor in college. And the goal for them is just to kind of get them used to competing at the college level, get the first meet out of the way. Hopefully they go home and you always hope and pray they actually train and don't take a three weeks off and come back and get the, the real meat of the season going. So it's just an opportunity to assess and see where we're at and then know what adjustment that we need to make going forward to make sure that when the season starts in January, since the indoor season is so small, you know, we don't have a chance to run around and, and, and get many opportunities. So every one you get, they, they better count. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking for for this meet, just a kind of little rust buster. Um, not the whole team will compete. Most of our throwers won't compete. Uh, our distance runners obviously just finished in cross country. They are all sort of hibernating, just trying to recover a little bit. Um, so it'll be a group of sprinters, hurdlers, and some pole vaulters, um, and probably not a throw at all. So that's kind of what I'm looking for uh, out of that meet. Uh, kind of get get things going, kind of get the, the anxiety out of it, and kind of get the kids going forward. How has the transition been from the outdoor championships ended in, in the, as you mentioned, the cross country recently, and, and now you begin the indoor. Um, how, how much have you seen them work uh, you know, in the weight room uh, and then trying to get going to, to really jumpstart the, the season this year? Sure. Um, you know, we had we had several injuries at the NCAA outdoor. Um, bad timing, a um, couple of things that we missed out on, and then mostly things we didn't pay enough attention to. That ended up backfiring, um, cost us a whole lot of points. Um, so I think the kids have recuperated well from that. We still have a few who are little dings and dings back from, from that outdoor. Uh, and obviously cross country is so brutal. Uh, you're running at 10,000 meters in, in, in uphill, downhill, jumping across the, uh, little creeks and, and whatnot. So they take a beating from that. Um, so ideally the goal right now is just to kind of, you know, load TLC, uh, get everybody rested uh, and then get them back going. Um, I still feel like we missed some opportunities um, outdoor. And I still think that the, the team that, that competed outdoor was much better than, than, than we showed because most of our big pieces sort of fell apart at the end. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think this team is probably going to be um, a little bit more experienced, a little bit more savvy. Uh, we're really young, just a couple of seniors. Um, so that makes it difficult because you're trying to feed off of your experience and there's really not much to go around because they're sort of leading themselves because um, nobody can really explain to them what it's going to feel like because nobody's had experienced it. Um, in, in that role, most of our, our, our Volunteer coaches who are also post collegian they play a huge role in that because they've been there before, Olympians and world record holders, and they play a better role in, in connecting and helping the kids know what to expect going forward. For a guy like uh, John Burr transitioning from a sport like football into uh, running, like what do you do to help him acclimate and I guess get him away from having a football body into more of a track yeah, John's going to have to do a whole lot of running in a very short amount of time to try to get, kind of get himself what we call track fit. Um, you know, he's lifting, he's running, he's doing all the stuff that we would typically do. But uh, we, we, we're a little bit hard surface. So for us, uh, everything is taller and off the ground. So, so a lot less squattiness. Uh, um, so he's going to have to get a lot taller. He's going to have to kind of get himself used to just sprinting and having good sprint mechanics. Um, not that it's not important in football, but in track, one small mistake can end up in tweaking the hamstring or, or, or when you're going over 42 inch hurdles, um, you show, shorten up yourself by squatting down a little bit, the hurdles get taller. So John has to be a big adjustment and, and he doesn't even have outdoor season. So for him, it's just the indoor season. So it's not like we can sort of use the indoor, like last year, get ready for outdoor. If he doesn't figure it out in the next few weeks, it's going to be a very short season. Uh, for him, and but the good thing is we do have three other guys now in the 110 that he can train with, and I think one of the things that hurt him last year he was basically the 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 only the only guy. Once Medrick uh, kind of got hurt, he was basically training just him and I by himself, and I think he lacked the uh, competitiveness that that having two or three guys to train with. And then John is a big competitor, so for him it's. He would rather go head to head out of the blocks with his teammates than than do a bunch of reps with me by himself. Well, I guess nobody would, but um, 
the general is going to probably enjoy it a little bit more. Um, and I think he's looking forward to, to, to sort of um, his last season. Plus, you got the Olympics, and he really wants to see if he can kind of make his hand at, at the Olympics um, and actually try to make that team. So it's going to be interesting how fast he can make that transition. Yeah, this year will be probably the strangest Olympics ever because we got the NCAA ending up on June 16th and then or June 13th. And then June 19th is the start of the Olympic trials. Typically, you got two, three, four weeks. So for the collegians, you're just finishing the NCAAs and you're looking at six days later, you're competing at the biggest meet of your entire life. I mean, the Olympic trials for the Team USA is the, the most competitive, most grueling of any country because like in 100 meter hurdles, there's 15 girls who have a chance to make the team and out of the top 17 in the world there's 15 americans so all of a sudden you're, you're going to war and and if you're a college kid you're just finishing competing in the ncaa you got six days to refocus get yourself back together and going back there so for me as a coach yeah i'm excited um but it, it, it presents a whole new sort of challenges um getting the collegians to finish and giving them the best chance. You can't take a collegiate kids and have them run five, six events at the NCAA if they have a legitimate chance to make the Olympic team. If they don't, it changes things. But if they have the chance to make that team, you sort of have to protect that kid's opportunity without hurting your team's chances of, of, of being successful. So it's going to be some very tough decision to be made to give the kids the very best opportunity to be successful at the Olympics. Because if they don't make it, they, they got to wait four years. So it's not like you can say, we'll do it next year. So for a kid like, like Kennedy Flannel, um, we're going to have to manage her. We're going to have to make the very best decision to make sure that we don't hurt her, her chances of potentially making the team, making the U.S. Olympic team. So anybody that has that chance, I'm going to have to do a really good job to make sure we manage a trip. Um, he has a legitimate chance. So if he throws 15, 20 meets in college, he's not going to have an arm left to be able to make that team. So we're dealing with making those decisions as we speak. When do we compete and when do we rest him? How many meets do we compete? How many is too many? Um, so all these things that makes it problematic because you still want to win a national championship. And I think our men's team is, is solid um, when well, we got guys everywhere, um, literally. Uh, we got guys in, in the hurdles, the throwers. We got sprinters. We got Micaiah, who's a favorite to win the 200. We got Jonathan Jones, who's favorite to win the 400. So all of a sudden, you have all these favorites and you add all those points together. All right, it'd be great to win a national championship, but also want to see if we could do both, win the national championship, and also give these guys a chance to make the Olympic team. Does that process start now with the indoor and how much you limit them or push them or how much you want them to push themselves or hold back so that they're fresh, not only indoor, but also outdoor in the, in sure. the summer? Yeah, that process started actually for fall training. Um, met with every coach, and we identified the kids that I thought could make the team or could have an, a chance to make the Olympic final. If you have a chance to make the Olympic trials final, you have a legitimate chance to make the team because anything can happen in the finals. So for anybody that I've identified that could do that, we had to sort of monitor their training. How much do we push them? How much do we get out of them? How many chances do we take? Because if you take a chance to push too hard and the kids get hurt, well, then you step back in a month of training. So for me, it's just a matter of identifying these kids, making sure that those kids understand what's at stake and what response that they have. You know, resting, taking care of yourself. You know, sleeping becomes important now because uh, if I'm going to push you in training, you got to make sure you recover. Uh, getting up on, on Sunday and getting treatment, getting some, some recovery stuff, getting the ice stuff, all those things that a kid can overlook now become very important because it means the difference between being in the Olympic or not even making it to the Olympic trials. Sure. I mean, I think Brooke Jaworski uh, um, from Wisconsin, it's phenomenal talent. Um, lots to learn, um, technically, a lot of adjustments she has to make, but she got a heart of a absolute tiger. I mean, she, she is going after it, and I think she's going to be really good as long as we can sort of manage her. Um, I mean, Julian's really not a freshman, but I think uh, Julian Alfred, she got here in January last year. Uh, really made a huge impact on the team right away. Was was top three in the 100 and the 200 at, at, at the conference. And, and if she didn't get hurt at the NCAA, would have scored there um, as well. Um, we also have Creighton Carosa. I mean, Creighton's this phenomenal talent. I mean, we, we didn't even think we were going to use him in cross country. He ended up being one of our best guys. And, and he comes from a running family. I mean, the, the whole family that 
everybody runs. Everybody's about running, about being elite around it. So, and he can do anything from the 800 all the way to cross country. Um, and we got a couple of transfer guys that I think can help us right away. Uh, but you know, in our sport, in sports in general, you can train the heck out of them. They still have to go out there and handle the adversity, anxiety, and all the issues that they have to do, class, exam, midterm. They have to handle all that stuff to be able to deliver on a deadline. So it's not as easy as saying the X and O's match, the kid's going to show up. The X and O's could be perfect, <laughs> and the kid don't show up because he broke up with his girlfriend yesterday, and then that, that's a good enough reason for a kid not to show up. So as a coach, you're managing not just – the player, the athlete, but you're managing their outside life and, and all their ups and downs and, and things that they're going to to make sure that they get to the line in, in a sound mindset to be able to perform. Anything else, Coach? I just have another one. Uh, sure. you're, you're still obviously a new coach, first, second year uh, going now. Um, you know, last summer uh, everyone saw what Matt Bowling did, mm -hmm. uh, the pole vaulter from Louisiana. For you, uh, as you continue to build your program, how important is it to, for you to, to keep the great in-state track and field talent here and uh, you know get those people here and also those names and those people help continue to build what you want to do and uh, you know continue to skyrocket, skyrocket the program? Sure, um, absolutely. I, I think probably number one is to keep the very best athletes in the state here. Um, but I think it goes a little bit more deeper than that. You got to have the kids that are a good fit for us. I mean, not everybody wants to wants this. You know, as everybody say it's, it's it's different out here in Texas, and it absolutely is. I've been, I've coached at a lot of different places, and there is no place like. Texas. It, there's no comparison. The amount of pressure to wear that uniform, the expectations that come with doing it, not everybody's going to want to embrace that. Some athletes want to go somewhere where they can sort of sort of fit in. Um, you know, one of the things I tell the athletes is that, you know, uh, going back in the days, tell you my age, there's Michael Jordan and there's Scottie Pippen. I'm looking for Michael Jordan. I'm looking for you to have a 102 degree fever and get on out there and score 40 because it's game seven. Um, you know, Scottie Pippen is a great player, but, you know, you remove Michael, and Scottie's not as special. And then what I'm looking for is, is kids that are not afraid to take that challenge on. You know, we talk about Texas not for the weak or the timid. It's absolutely true. Um, so not every kid that visit here are going to be selected to wear that, that coat uniform. I, I'm just not going to um, – well, we have a good team chemistry, a good team culture. If the kid doesn't fit into that team chemistry and culture, I don't care how good they are. They're not going to be able to be uh, here with us. Uh, because if, once you take your culture and you break it apart just to bring five or six points, well, that kid, five or six points, take away 15, 20, because culturally your team is in disarray. So recruiting is not as simple as getting the very best people. It's getting the people that fit your team, your system, your culture, the very best in your campus. You know, they they got to be able to go to class. This is not one of the universities where you can just sort of uh, just play and then go home and then somebody does your homework for you. So because of the difficulty of Texas, uh, athletically and academically, the kids have to be able to meet all those demands. And if they don't have it, if they don't want to embrace that, some kids, they say, well, well I mean, I got to go to class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Texas, you got to go to class every class every day. If that kid tells me that during the visit, then right away I said, no, no. I'm not going to spend all my days trying to force them to go to class. They have to want to go to class, want to get a degree, want to compete at the highest level, and want to be challenged and want to be put on the pedestal uh, in front of tons and tons of fans have high expectations of, of, of them. Um, so that type of athlete, it's not everybody. It's not how good you are doesn't mean you're going to fit in. And, and so for me, it's just a balance. And, and every athlete on my team have a say. They can come to me and say, hey, we had that recruit this weekend. We just not a fit. Didn't like the kid, the kid wanted to do A, B, C, D. This is not what we're at, uh, about. And if that's true, then at that point, we're going to not recruit that kid. Uh, because I believe uh, the fundamental, what makes a great team great is team. And everybody on that team has to understand what the team is and buy in to being a part, not being the part, but a part of that team and doing their part for us to be successful. Do you feel right now you're balanced right now mm -hmm. with the, the field events, athletes, and the sprinters? Or, or still need to get to where, you know, everyone's equal and you're strong in, in both areas? Sure. Um, you know, it's like um, when I got here, we had one or two throws, and one of the biggest concern and, and disappointment was the fact that there was nobody else for them to train with. Um, so if you're going to have a guy like Tripp, I got to put guys around him that he can compete with and train with in practice. So 
him by himself, he could do it, but him with two or three other guys that are going to challenge and, and, and push him. The way he's training, the way he's lifting right now is out of control, and I think it's because the, the kids around him are challenging him, and he has to respond, something that he hasn't had. Elena Bruckner has been by herself here for three years, so giving her teammates uh, – competitors, people that she can practice with, it's also important. So, uh, and I think every event area is, is important. We're not going to be a distant school. Um, you, know, you know, you look at 105 degree weather, nobody wants to run 18 miles in, in 105 degree weather. But but if we're going to sponsor cross country, we're, we're going to be good at it. You know, there's no point saying, what's well, not important. Well, absolutely it's important. I mean, can we live or die by cross country? Probably not. But I'm not going to have a cross country team that has no expectation and have a bunch of kids on the team that we know I couldn't care less whether to do well or not. I want to make sure they understand if we're going to sponsor that sport, it's going to be important. We're going to do whatever we can to make sure that these kids can go to the NCAA and, and be competitive and have the best experience possible that they could have anywhere else. Um, so I, I do think we're getting closer to that. Um, I'll focus to the NCAA, but I also want to win the conference. You know, it's like my philosophy is that if there's a game of marble, they're giving a trophy, well, I want that trophy. That, it doesn't matter what, what the championship is. I want to try to go out there and win that. So, yeah, I want to win the Big 12 every year, and I want to be, be NCAA champion. Uh, I think we can do both without sacrificing one or the other.